I will just so we've got something go through a summary of how it works just sort of to level set and then I do have a couple of things that I wanted to to, uh, to discuss uh so okay so the table of contents is now Bob's wiki category tree which is about 190 categories and what the table of contents shows on the left is the top three levels uh, of that category tree so home is at the top and then notices n newcomers n developers d reference r uh, community c and so on and then there's another set of levels below each of those and basically the problem is to tame that almost 200 category that 190 category hierarchy um, if you look at it in web form, if you if you are sort of exposed to it, if you try to wrap your arms around it on the web, it presents you with one set of challenges. And what I wanted to do was try to overcome those challenges uh, with a slightly different or very different interface. So the way we have a couple of ways of doing that. Um, so for example, if you pick a, uh, say, interfaces, Interfaces is a, a level three in the hierarchy, and its its children are small enough that it is it has a small enough number of subcategories and pages, you can actually just lay them out flat. So rather than navigating around on the web uh, from category to category to subcategory and page to page, you can simply lay them all out flat uh, on the display. If you get to something like frameworks, frameworks is sufficiently large that you can't do that. But what we can do is show the entire subcategory tree underneath frameworks. And as you touch each category in turn, we show you the corresponding pages. And we also show you the category page over, sorry, corresponding page names to the right. And to the far right, we show the, uh, the category page out of the wiki. And hovering on a page uh, loads that page on the right. Hovering on a page name loads that page on the right. The other thing that happens that I, I think is new um, or new again, I took it out and put it back in, is that when you do hover for more than a second and a half, um, that page, whatever it is, is added to your history of pages. So this is sort of a, I, I guess you'd say it's a hack to get around the nature of hover-based interfaces where all of your visits are very ephemeral and it's easy to find something and then go somewhere else and maybe not quite remember where it was. Um, I would hope you could find it again quickly uh, because you can navigate so very, very fast with this interface. But just in case you can't, it's probably in the top few uh, items in your history menu and you can click on it and, and load it up. So in addition to these categories, Bob's categories, we have synthetic categories at the top. Nuvoke is one of them. So this is just, this hasn't changed from the beginning. This has been pretty stable. And then under search, I have two searches that I added to my table of contents, random fixed seed and dyadic uh, transpose. Wiki and forums uh, are both supported. Uh, and then there's the forums browser as well. That has not changed. Um, and that's the story at this point. That's everything that it does. Um, in terms of things that I think it should do, um, I, I have decided, and this was based on some back and forth with Bob, um, that I need the, the, this scrolling mechanism needs to be supported in the um, in the forum browser because there are a, just a few, um, and I, I never, not sure where they are anymore, but I found one or two uh selections of subjects and selections of uh contributors that are so long that they just go right off the screen so there needs to be some kind of scrolling mechanism uh, at work there so i intend to do that um i'd also i think i'm ready to start trying to produce a standalone version probably for the mac first because mac is what i happen to work on um, so, Bob, I would hope that within the next week or so, I could get you something that wasn't just a script file, but was actually a working 
a working application. And I'm starting to think through all the things I might need to do in order to make that happen. The, um, I forget the gentleman's name, but somebody produced a really good, what seems to be a really good piece of documentation on how to build a standalone app using uh, the J, using J9. Um, so I've been reviewing that and trying to trying to get my arms around it. So I hope I hope to do that. Next. Uh, I'm is that Norman Drinkwater did that one? Norman Drinkwater, yeah, yeah, exactly. Okay. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So I'm going to use that as as my guide. 